G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Last time I got this building mostly done, but I did forget something really important when I was designing it. And that was a connector for this little forklift. And I spent a bit of time in creative mode. I think I've come up with a quite neat and pretty cool way of dealing with that problem without having to do any major redesign work on this structure. And my plan for this connector will be to embed it in the floor. So let's get rid of this little structure here because it doesn't need to be here anymore. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Dang it, that was going to be easier to grind down if I'd left that stairway there. So let's get rid of this block here. And this block here. And into the sunken floor, I'm going to add a large hinge a piston and another hinge and a few armor plate and a connector and all that stuff. So underneath what I'm going to start with is a conveyor junction. The reason I'm going to use a conveyor junction is that I think it could be useful just in case I change my mind later to make it so that this connector is actually capable of providing at least gases. It's not going to be connected with large conveyor tubes though so it's not going to be any use whatsoever for trying to transfer materials into the forklift but I don't really have a need for that right now what I mainly need is a system where I can get power onto the forklift All right, now we've got the attachment point for the first hinge I'm gonna place a large hinge down here and then I'm going to grind a part I'm gonna add another part which is gonna be a small one that I can work with small bricks for this because I need the smaller blocks to be able to build this the way I want it. Then let's move this to the other position it's going to live in. Oh, hang on. <laughs> It'd help if I connected it to the base because these are currently not hooked up in any way that will allow power to transfer. Uh, I might just put that there and that there. And I've still got access to those the conveyor junctions so I can put pipes in later. Now that we've got power, and it's gone the wrong way. So the lower limit will be minor, will be zero, and the upper limit will be 90. Those of you who might have already figured out what I'm planning here might be wondering why on earth I'm putting a connector style like this right up against the airtight hangar doors. And the answer is, I didn't really think it through with the design. So ideally, yes, you'd put it up the back here so that you could reverse into it and all done Energy but because low. I didn't do that I want to hide this in the floor so that what I can do is drive the forklift in push it right up against this wall use a programmable block script to transmit a signal to cause this thing to lift up out of the floor I can then reverse into it connect it and then hop out of the forklift and it's all hooked up similarly I can hop in the forklift use the command to lower this down and drive back out at least that's the dream We'll see how well that works. So what I want to do is first up start with line on a slope there, then you uh, one more. No, not one more. It's too many. Then a tip. Full block. Face and another tip. And now you can see that these three blocks, the top of them is at exactly the same height as the large grid blocks surrounding them, which is perfect. Then what I can do is place another one of block there and then a hinge. With a little hinge here, I'm going to be able to hinge up a back section which covers this larger hinge. So flip up a, a back section that covers this hinge so that I'll be able to have this whole floor nice and neatly covered up. Energy critical. I should be able to do this. Half light armor block and another one out to there. But I'm actually going to use a tip instead just to try and minimize the number of block edges that are here. We go along there then we put this one flipped around so that the tip is all toward the end of the thingy. Now I actually want to make this out of battered because the flooring around it is battered. I might weld this up so that it's a bit easier to see what's going on. 
Okay, now we just need to cover up the rest of the floor. And the way I have in mind to do this is... Make some more slabs along the side here. Whoops. Really don't want to fall down in that hole because I might get stuck. I don't want to have to grind my way out. Uh, some more tips along the edges. Ah. Can't place those ones. Right, because the hinge is in the way. That's fine. I'll deal with those in a moment. So then I'm going to put a half slope on both sides. So one on this side and one on the other piece as well. But I should, probably won't be able to place those while I've got this. Yeah. I need to flip this up to be able to do that. I can get access to it with build vision. Ah. Ah, that's why I didn't do that that way in the in the build I did in creative. Right. Uh, that doesn't work. Need to get rid of... Oh, oh, oh. Lower limit needs to be zero, so that doesn't keep pushing down to the ground. Okay, I need to get rid of those. And I do have to do something tricky here. Like that. Oh no! Oh, that's going to be there forever. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting down there to get rid of that. Whoops. Well, if I ever complain about clanging in this building, you all know why. Right, so what I need to do, instead of what I just did, was bring... This out. Another block. Yeah, this should work now. Then I can put down my half slabs. Because now when I raise this up, I can get access to it again, yep. When I raise this up, I will have the block clearance to be able to put the pieces in there. Whereas I didn't have it before. So then two on either side. Like so. And while this is up, I may as well put down these bits. And you, if you're going to build something like this, you do have to do it pretty much exactly as I've done, at least from the testing that I've tried out so far. Any other way, and you end up with stuff just not quite fitting. This is not quite as smooth as I would like it, but it does work pretty well. Okay, let's reverse that small hinge. See if it nicely nestles in the floor, and it pretty much does. Sometimes it kind of catches a little bit, but hopefully those hitches will be fixed in the future as Keen have said that they're going to continue updating the collisions here. But you can see how neat that is in the floor. That is awesome. And then to bring this up so that I can add the piston and the connector, what we do is uh, grab our hinges and if I click reverse on both of these nothing happens because this is set to zero. <laughs> Whoops. No, it's not. Why are you stuck in the ground? No, you... what? Hm. I don't know why that was there. But anyway, this comes up. And it'll settle in that position. This, fortunately, is small enough to fit and still allow this anti hanger door to close. Which means we can have this linked up and have things locked down with this room pressurized which is what I wanted. That's perfect. Then, and then I realized there was no point in me piping up this hinge because Energy I'm not critical. gonna build anything onto the back of this that's pipeable anyway. There's not enough room. I'm gonna be building a piston with a connector straight on top. So that was a whole big waste of exercise doing that. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, here's what it is. The connector gets built and our piston. And then I just have a control that reverses all three. And it'll pop out of the ground and pop back into the ground. Is that about the right height? It looks it. Let's set the max distance to 1.5. Uh, I'm also going to add a timer block down here. A programmable block down here. And weirdly, an antenna down here. Now the antenna is because I want to be able to remotely control this thing. And if I hide it down here, it's a lot easier than finding a spot to put a giant one elsewhere on this thing. And I can make it very short range since it only needs to receive signals with, from a vehicle that's within the hangar space or just a little bit outside. So it shouldn't cost too much power to run either. And it means I can test this system before I actually get the connection hooked up to the main base. 
So it all kind of makes sense, I think. Let's grab our timer block. And it'll be reverse that hinge, reverse that hinge, and reverse that piston. Now if I set this up with a two second delay just so I can start it and have a look. And then we'll watch this, see if it works. Oh, look at that. Oh yes, that's amazing. Let's do it again. And TB. Start. See it lift up. Try it. <laughs> that didn't go well. <laughs> uh, might need some adjustment on the timings. Put it back in the ground. And then, let's have a look at what I've done with these things. Uh, we've got a hinge. That's the smaller hinge. It's going, let's go at minus three. This might need to go a bit faster. And then, let's just try that, see if that's enough. Ah, the piston's still too quick. I think it was the connector getting caught on the collectors. Let's try that one more time. Hopefully. Oh yeah, there we go. Check that out. That is a thing of beauty. Now let's do it a few more times and make sure it's not just luck that that one worked. I keep setting that two second delay on the timer just so that I can watch it work rather than ending up getting stuck in a situation where I turn around and it's already done. Now it's not going to be perfectly smooth because as I said some of the collisions are still to be updated for some of these blocks so we'll just have to hope that as Keen continues to update the collision meshes of all the blocks this will get smoother and smoother. As long as it works reliably I'm happy. Oh yes. I love that we can do things like this now and have it so well hidden in the floor. Oh. oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I haven't decided whether I want to have, like, yellow and black hazard painting around the edge or whether I want it to be nice and hidden in the floor like that. Uh, I'll have to think about that one and... What I might do is maybe I should just paint it quickly with some hazard painting so that you guys can see it and then leave some comments about which you prefer. Fortunately, YouTube doesn't let me do polls anymore, so I can't do a poll to see what people prefer, because I like doing that with uh, some of the color scheme stuff in survival, maybe. So do you prefer it like that, where we know exactly where the thing that's hiding in the floor is, or do you think it looks better when I left it all in white and made it much more subtle? I'm going to leave it like that for now. And we'll open that up. Then I need to put an antenna and a programmable block onto the... Oh! Energy low. <laughs> Just letting myself get distracted for a moment. Because I keep calling it the forklift, and I do have a name for this. Quite a few people said that from the side on, it looks a bit like a mammoth. And... I think because of <laughs> the number of things I have around here that have names that end in an E sound, and because it's shaped like a mammoth, I am going to call it Manny. Though I'm still debating whether I call it Manny with an IE or Manny with an with a Y. Not sure on that one. I feel like Manny with an IE is taking it a little too far. Uh, I need an antenna and I need a programmable block. Grind a little hole in here for energy critical. Our antenna now, I think, should be safe to get rid of this small conveyor tube. Pretty sure that's fine. Then what I can do is this put the programmable block in, in here very neatly. And even better, I have enough room for this. Just 
sticking the antenna antenna in there as well. But that's a nice and tight range. I'll leave my hole again. There we go. Now Manny has an antenna that it can broadcast from. This base has an antenna it can receive from. And now for the fun bit. Programmable block. Base. Whoops. Base. PB. Base PB receiver. Edit. Browse scripts. There are a few scripts that can handle this behavior. The one I am using is called X sender receiver. It's based off a script I used to use that did the same thing. Uh, well, as said here, inspired by script from Iptopsic, written by Zeva. So all I have to do is set that going, edit my custom data change this from transmitter only to false because this one is actually a receiver I don't need to do anything else here right now what I do need to do is grab the name of this timer block copy that and head over to many up in and set the programmable block up here edit browse scripts send Okay, custom data here is fine because this will only be a transmitter. Then, on say our second hotbar, I can grab this programmable block, drag it down onto here, click run, and in this argument box, I paste in the name of that timer block. Click confirm. And now, if I press that hotbar button, Nothing happens. What have I done wrong? <laughs> Dang it. That's something wrong. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, that worked out really well. Uh, hostile spotted. H HQ, please advise. That's your third call this week. That's actually the third call from the assertive mod this week. And I fear that thrush is going to be a bit too close. Because it is heading very much for me. I need to keep an eye on that. Uh, I need to figure out why this isn't working. Because I had this working when I was testing this earlier. Yay, now i got it working. I just had to recompile it after I changed what was in the custom data. There we go. I have control over that connector in the floor. So, let's unlock. Let's drive in there forwards. Let's see if I can hook up the forklift to the connector. I should probably also open the doors. Might need to set up a second timer block for that. I can remote control the doors too. 2.0. He's getting close. Let's get many inside. I think I can get a little bit further in if I raise up to say there. And then push in. Yeah. Now I just need to switch to spectator cam because I can't seem to get a third person view from many so that I can actually watch this happen. So if I switch to my second hotbar, press 3, look at that, it opens up, and then I can reverse back and lock. I'm locked down, connected inside the hangar, and I should be able to close these doors and keep it airtight. Manny is now getting charged up by the new building. Yeah, yeah, yes! <laughs> I am so incredibly happy with how this looks and how this works. Because all I need to do when I go out is disconnect, drive a little bit forward, close the thing down, wait till I hear some clanging because that usually means it's in. Oh, I can actually see the antenna moving. That's quite helpful. Now I should be able to reverse out. There we go. Perfection. I'm so happy with this. I'm so happy. Oh, this is such a cool thing. I love this system. All right, let's park this thing because I don't really need to do any more with it until I start collecting the pods. Drive in. Try and get myself a view where I can see stuff. Drive in. Bring the connector up. Try not to be in the way of it. And locked. This is just awesome. This has worked out so well. 
Another suggestion I was given that I kind of like, even though it is a bit frivolous, like everything I do, um, was to make these doors not open in one smooth go, but to have them kind of peel open and then close. So a few people noticed that when I was showing the time lapse of these doors, because I closed and opened them one by one using build vision, they'd done so sequentially. And I should, because I've got this room down here, be able to add in the timers to make that possible. Now I've just got to name them top, middle, and bottom. We'll start with the top ones. Open closed, open closed. And then trigger the next timer. Start. And the next timer, middle. And this is a fairly, this is a very simple setup. Next timer. Nope, did that one. And then the final timer. And now, if I grab the name of that timer, first one, copy that, set all three of these to have a delay of one, open the cockpit, and run that programmable block again with a different command. Not the receiver, this is it. Transmitter. Run, and run it with that hangar door one command. Now when I run that, we get this effect. And they close in sequence. Which actually does look pretty cool <laughs> when you do it that way. I think I'd be tempted to do this with most of my hangar doors. And similarly, it opens in sequence. Yeah. Cool. That's done. Uh, let's turn off that. Turn off the one on the outside too. Then, before I start building anything more around here, I think I should do what people suggested and build the connection to the main base first. Since the connection will allow me to build all the stuff here without having to go all the way back to the main base to do it. Although, that's less of a hassle than the time it's going to take me to build the connection to the main base. Because <laughs> it's going to require the liftsy and it's going to be a challenging build to say the least so where to start from that tree is just a bit too close to that conveyor port there so I might actually start from the back which is further away but should work better because I can build out from the side to about here and I can go across to a pole here or something like that and then it'll kind of thread its way through the trees. Go across. Do a section maybe every eight blocks or so. Once I get onto the straight bit. Now, the worry I have is that it's not going to be tall enough if I just go straight off that block. Unblock the lifty so that we can at least start getting this done. Now we're we going 23%. Yeah, that's going to last a while. That's kind of what the lifty started with and it took forever for me to run that power out. Detach. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no, no, no! I forgot the food truck didn't have a landing gear to lock it down! <gasps> oh! Oh no! Alright. We gotta fix this. Oh. Why do I do this to myself? Crane time! Ooh. Uh, let's not make the same mistake twice in quick succession. Let's lock the crane to the ground. Oh. Oh. We're there. Lock. Alright. Now I have to be very careful with this hope that I can lift this up without causing any damage to it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be that strong. Holy moly. Uh, okay. That uh, is very unexpected. Oh, whoops. Try and get this somewhat level before I put it down. And there we go. We are pretty well vertical. 
Before I release it, I might actually just stick a landing gear on it. Since I'm not sure this thing's going to be able to move around much at all. Especially with the solar panels deployed as they are. Now the uh, food truck is just going to stay there sort of in the way of everything for a little while, I think. I might just move the crane around to... Ooh, hold up. The crane's quite strong. I wonder if it's strong enough to build this thing in segments. I'm going to test. So what I'm thinking is, if I build, say, a post, and then I bring the crane around, and I... Or I build a platform, so just the foundation. I bring the crane around, and I build the post lying down, and then I just use the crane to flip it around to the, to the right way up. Right. Uh, so that'd be, what, five blocks? So let's try this out. Because if that works, that could save me a lot of time on the lift seat. And also be a really cool way to build stuff. So it'll be five of those, and then it'd be, say, let's just put a sixth on there because of the weight of a hinge. Or should I put the hinges on? I'll put the hinges on. So there'll be a hinge on each side. And probably a turret on top too, but I wouldn't be able to place that because the collision with the voxels is on the bottom. But this will be about the same mass as what I need to lift up. Let's try this out. And if this does work, I'm absolutely going to have to set this up with the more advanced control systems that I've been sent. Alright, we grab. And we lift. And then, what I'd need to do is twist this around so that I can line it up. This will be the real test, because I don't know that the rotors are going to be strong enough on that grabby arm, even if I grab this near the center of mass to do this. But it's looking promising. It's looking very promising. Oh, this is going to be a great way to build. I love this. <laughs> I can pre-build sections. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be amazing. This is... Oh, this is engineering. I am, I am in love with this idea. Yes, yes, yes. I'm totally building this way. Now, I'm not going to be able to build this way in amongst the trees because the crane will probably end up knocking half the trees down. So I'll use the lifty for that bit. But for the other bits, I'm totally doing it with the crane. Need to get some food and water first, or at least some water. In between that last sentence and now, there's actually been several days because I've had to break up this recording into two parts with the shifts that I've had this week. But what that's meant is I've had a bit of time to think about some questions that I suspect people might wonder given my choices of where I wanted to start this conveyor line. I want to start it round the back rather than round the front here where these hookups already are because I just don't like the look of it. Or I don't think I'll like the look of it starting here. Um, I quite like the way that the front of this building looks now. I don't really want to change it up too much. So that's kind of the main reason. That and also I like the idea of trying to thread the convey a line through the trees. So that is where I'm going to start it. First off, to get the lift seat in here, I'm going to need to get rid of that, that, and that. And I'm going to build this missing block, because it's going to drive me insane. There we go. Much better. Now, lift seat. Lift seat needs to have an antenna that is on. All the wheels need to get turned on because I think I turned them off as well. I'm up from the ground. Let's hop on the front so it's easier to steer this thing. Huh? Why are they moving so slowly? Oh, there's a propulsion override. That explains a lot. There we go. Now that's back at zero. It all should move normally. That would have been because I had the subgrid wheel control script on the... Wow, my welder is just staying there. My arm is just stretching. <laughs> How long can my arm go? Oh, I wonder if this is the same bug that, I mean, that's why we keep seeing our arms stretch as we get in and out of cockpits. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, uh, I need to start building a conveyor hook up here. Start building the bit that's going to go out to a pole that's just a little bit further out from the buildings. Probably three or four blocks, I guess. Uh oh. What? Did it actually... Did it actually send something after me? I can't see any drone. But it just... Oh no, where's the drone coming from? There must be a drone around here somewhere. I don't like being up the lift seat while this happens. Mm. 
Seems to have failed to get any assistance. That's good. For me. Unlike when I was building up on the launch air asteroid, it's going to be a bit more difficult for me to line up these towers correctly because I don't have the jetpack available to me to put myself exactly where I need to be and line up the next block properly. So I'm trying to think about how I can actually do that right here because it is going to be a lot more difficult. So I want to build this up one more block so that I've got even more clearance for vehicles to get underneath. I will then want to start with a hinge onto it. Yeah, I think it's on that side makes a lot of sense. Then line this up to, say a post here. So the challenge I have with lining up these poles and making them connect to the other base and to each other is that it would be nice to keep it all large grid and not have to switch to small grid for the conveyor sections between, but I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do that because Unlike on the asteroid where I could use my jetpack and I could line stuff up perfectly and I could try and make it so that it'll snap into place, here I just, I don't have that luxury. So what I think I, I think I'm just going to have to build it all in small grid, which is a pity because it had been suggested to me and I quite liked the idea of trying this. If I build these segments in large grid, I could, once I've got them locked on both ends, maybe turn them into static grids. I'm not sure if the game will let me do that, but I thought it'd be nice to try, because if I can make the segments static grids, the chances of anything exploding and clanging out becomes very, very low. And obviously that is preferable. Plus, fewer subgrid movement possibilities, so less performance issues. Um, maybe I will try and see if I can line it up anyway. There's a small chance I could get this to work, I guess. Uh, just trying to line it up from the ground. Uh, let's get enough for a hinge, because I'm going to need to weld that whole thing up while I'm up there. I don't want to have to come back down. I also had another idea for how I could take advantage of these being large grid. If I put a junction in the middle of each of these segments, I should be able to stick a turret in the middle of the segments and put wind turbines on each of the pillars. So I get the defense and the power benefits. Which was another reason for me to try and do this in large grid. Because obviously, yes, I can build small grid turrets, but small grid turrets don't shoot as far. And so I'd be better off with large grid ones. Probably don't need to put a turret on this segment. Nine and then what I need to put here will be a hinge part. Like so. That brush. Jeez, these, these things are coming very close over my base and I don't like it. I could probably... Oh yeah, I can reach it from here. That's good. Oh no! That's definitely an incoming drone. That's a mosquito. Ah, I need some decoys. I should build some cap hacks around the place. Come on, drone. Come on. Get shot down. Don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm trying to draw fire, but I don't want to get hit. <laughs> Come on, turrets. You can take it down before it kills me. Oh. Gee. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, that's not on top of my stuff, is it? No, that fell down the side of the hill. Okay. Uh. Another drone Energy dealt with. Critical. Yeah, that looks about right. Pretty much straight between the trees. Now for the tricky part. What I want to do is try and line up something that's going to sit right here, but then I also have to get the height right so that it lines up to those blocks. Oh, I just realized I'm doing this all wrong. So, if I want to line up a tower properly to this, I need to build them on the ground, and the tower that I'm going to build on the ground should be three blocks tall, I think I've only got here. Didn't really give myself much clearance. So it'll be one, two, three of those, then a junction, conveyor junction. On the side of that, we'll have a hinge uh, this way. Get rid of the hinge part from that. On the other side, Go up another step. 
get another bit of extra clearance because I don't think I've got enough ground clearance. And then go with another hinge. That way. That one can keep its hinge part. And then, once I've got this welded up, I'll use the crane to lift this into position and lock this onto that hinge. I then should be able to use this piece to find out where on the ground I need to line up a single light armor block so that I can try and snap this into the ground and weld it on. Hopefully the height doesn't become a problem. I'm thinking I may actually want to make this tower that I've started one block shorter even, just to make sure I've got as much freedom in that placement as possible. But welding this while it's on the ground is going to be a lot easier than doing it with the Lipsy. All right, let's see how this works. I am curious to see if I can make this thing function as I think it could. Oh, that was close to hitting me in the face. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Possibly should have set that down gently instead of just dropping it. All right, let's, uh, let's get closer up to the thing. Hopefully I can get this one bit in before dark. Then I'm going to have to figure out, figure out some sort of lighting rigging to do the rest of this thing. Uh, that should be relatively close to the center mass of this thing. I could use... In fact, let's try it. Uh, info. Show center of mass. So if we have a look at this little grid here, you can see the center of mass it's actually not too far off from where I thought it was. My landing gear is pretty good. I want to be close to the center of mass, obviously, because then any rotate, any force I need at these rotors is diminished because I've got a counterbalance in each direction. All right. Let's see if I can safely do this. That is quite a heavy piece because it is all large grid. Uh, but I am going to need to move just gently. And reverse up and get that crane a bit closer. Do have a time limit, but it's not an absolute one. I do just really, I would really appreciate getting this done by sunset. Oh dear, that's gone too far. This is what I mean about this hitch. I don't, I've done it terribly. I've done it absolutely awfully. I should have just copied my goose hitch. Ugh. I apologize to anyone who has driven a semi trailer watching me do this. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but it's not very good. <laughs> okay, this should bring me close enough. If my front driving wheels will... My steering wheels will stick, which they don't most of the time. Which is why I need to move where that hitch rests to being over those front segments driving wheels. I fear I might be too close. Oh, wait, no. I'm okay. Uh, didn't track these pistons. No! <laughs> it's gotten dark! I can't see! Ah! Um... Dang it! <sighs> Let's see, what can I do quickly to fix that? It's a little bit of light, but not much. Um... Don't have an ability to put light on the end of this thing. And I don't think a 20 meter light from this pole is going to do anything useful. Uh, really need to get up to the crane, but I can't. can't reach it. Oh, hold up. I know I can improve this. I put lights on the forklift. On Manny. Let's use Manny's spotlights to light up this situation for me. Oop, treat. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay, that should help quite a bit. Little work lights. Now maybe I can actually work out how I'm going to get this thing into position because I do think I've got the crane too close. I think I need to move out a little bit. Uh, which means spinning it back till it's square and then moving out. Oof, that is bucking a lot when I do this. It's a fun way to build though. Takes me back to my days playing Lego as a kid where I'd um, build massive cranes and do stuff with them even though obviously my hands are better suited to the task. It's probably why I love Space Engineers as much as I do anyway. 
Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Can I jump up there and get build vision onto it? Yes, I can. Oh, can't move back. I'm gonna have to take the risk. Attach. Yes! Aha! I have it locked. Excellent. Now, for the fun, challenging part of this whole... The lava? Any more steel plate. Uh, is trying to line up this... the placement of this block on the ground to a spot where this tower can lock to it. And not stretch that hinge and the other hinge too badly in any particular direction. I have realised I've done one thing wrong though. Which is, I didn't put a junction in the middle of that segment, and I should have, because I need some way to attach a control panel, or have a control panel base block somewhere there, that I can convert to station. That should be a station grid. Then, let's unhitch the crane from this thing. Oh, this is working out actually heaps easier than I thought it was going to be. I didn't, I didn't think this was going to work at all. But this looks like it's possibly one of the best ways for me to do this. If I can get the world pad on there, I can either use the liftsy or I can just build a quick scaffold. And I'll be able to easily... Oh, need some water. I'll be able to easily weld the two pieces together and, and I've got my tower exactly or pretty dang close for survival mode to where I need it to be. I'm loving building this way as well. <laughs> I hope it looks as cool in the time lapse as I think it might. When it, or at least once I get more of the time lapse done. So more of the build done and kind of sequence the whole thing together. I don't think I'm going to get all of it done today, but hopefully I'll get a bit of it done. I think whatever that ship is up there is going to send something after me. And I also will need to check out what ship that is so that I can fix it up and have it not display as an antenna rather than another ship. Yep, calling droid support. Incoming. Mayfly. Ooh. I think those are still not too aggressive. Not too nasty anyway. Oh man. Two drone attacks. In a fairly short period of time too. It's only been like half an hour. I think I'm I'm gonna have to step up the priority of increased defenses around here. Because I don't think it'll be too long before one of these drones does something that's devastating. Like, shoot me in the face! I'd much rather them shoot a Kapak decoy in the face. Because <laughs> I've got the Kapak decoy mod on this save so that I can use it, so... Uh, these. I'm going to use a few of those around the place. There we go. Alright. With that there... I can... Hopefully... That out of the way. Spin the top into place and have this tower locked down. And it'll be step one complete. Here we go. And. Well, that wasn't what I expected to have happen. Um. Uh. Why did that blow up? Oh. Oh. Dang it, dang it, dang it. That's so annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that again. Uh, so how to make this work? I think if I turn off the hinge down this end. That might help. But also, I want to find out if I can turn weld pads off. So if I can turn the weld pad off, I should be able to turn it off until they're in the right position. Then, at that point, I turn them back on and hope, if I can turn it back on, I turn it back on and hopefully then it'll weld and be safe. Ah, uh, it doesn't have a toggle on off. Okay, so we can't use the weld pads. That sucks. I'm gonna have to act- I'm gonna have to use proper merge blocks. 
There's at least them I can turn on and off and have them lock into place when I actually need it. So this is going to be a slightly more expensive way of building than I'd intended. I'm thinking if I turn this off before I turn this merge block on, hopefully that'll give just a little bit of wiggle room to allow this to connect without everything exploding again. In three, in two, in one, and... Dang. <laughs> ah, I can't build this way. That's so sad. Oh, I think what's happening is just that tiniest, eensy weensy littlest bit of movement of the stuff that's already in the voxels is enough to make it explode. Because instead of everything else getting pulled and the hinge just being pushed a little bit out of where it liked to be uh, it pushed the stuff that's in the voxels and so of course it explodes oh well hopefully someone has some suggestions because I, I, I would like to keep building with the crane even if I can't build the pillars with it what I might do is build the connections with it so I'll kind of build up the whole conveyor line uh, and then lock that into place, but I don't know how easy that's going to be. Oh, actually, I do know how easy that's going to be because I can even place them down, detach the hinges at both ends, lift it off with the crane and then build it on the ground, put it back up again because that could be potentially quicker than using the lifty. Um... But yeah, if anyone's got any other ideas about an approach I could take here that might work where I can pre-build the pillars and merge them into the ground. Oh! Oh! I think I know how to do it. I think if I detach the hinge, merge the pillar to the ground, and then reattach the hinge, it should be fine. Yeah, I might, I was going to end here, but I'm, I think I might actually try that because it'd be worth seeing if that works. This, I, I have a good feeling about this. I have a very good feeling about this. I think this should work. This is a rather convoluted way to do stuff, but that was the whole idea for um, making me not have a jetpack. So I wanted to force engineering into the design process and the build process. I didn't want to be able to just whack my jetpack on, fly around, build everything nice and easy, and then for some reason add stairs to everything, even though I don't actually ever walk up them. This is what I was hoping out of Survival Impossible. I was hoping this stuff would be challenging, this stuff would be fun to figure out. Alright, let's try it. Three, two, one, on! Well, that didn't work! Uh. <laughs> what? Oh, that's... Whoa. Okay. There's clearly not a lot of torsion or, like, twisting give in those um, hinges. Let's just attach that in case it falls on something. Well, it would appear my plan is not going to work. Next time, I'm going to try and figure out what I could do differently to try and make this work. Because I want to build these pillars. I want this conveyor line to work. Because I think it'll look cool and it'll be really good to have some extra pillars around the place that are conveyed up so that I can shove turrets on them. So next time, it'll be figuring that out and hopefully some tips from you guys on other approaches I might be able to try. Because that's all the ideas I've got at the moment of how I might be able to make this work using the crane to build this stuff up. The alternative is build a mock-up, use the crane to place it, place the bottom blocks, remove the, mo the crane's mock-up, and then build it up from the ground and then lock it on. That might work. I don't know. I guess we'll find out if I can't come up with something better. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.